Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, very uh, thankful and honored to be part of the Vancouver Canucks moving forward. Very uh, thankful to have Jim Rutherford as, as my boss and my mentor here to uh, deal with things on day-to-day -day stuff. I'm very honored, as I said, to be part of the Canucks moving forward. I'm very thankful to the Aquilini family for their support and the trust in myself here. Since I stepped into uh, Vancouver and Rogers Arena from day one, the Aquilini family has been uh, committed to uh, building a championship team here. Up to this point, I'm extremely uh, happy with the process of uh, Rick Tockett and his coaching staff to uh, align with the players, uh, build a foundation here, how we want to play and how we want to work every day. Um, that being said, we've got a lot of work ahead of us here, and uh, we're all aware of that, and, and we're ready for the challenge. So um, thanks, and uh, open up for the questions. Uh, Patrick, I guess we'll just get started with how nice is it to get this extension for you and your family? As I said, I, I'm very honored and, and proud to be part of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, uh, what Jim had uh, done to me here, uh, giving me an opportunity to, to be a general manager in the National Hockey League is nothing I take for granted. I know how hard it is. It's a very competitive league, and uh, I will just uh, continue to push forward here uh, as I said, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, uh, established uh, uh, or self yet. We have a lot of work ahead of us uh, to where we, we need to be. So um, nothing's going to change. What have you learned about Vancouver and the Vancouver fan base in just over two years now? Uh, extremely passionate, uh, extremely knowledgeable. Um, I think they want to win, and they uh, show up here every, every night and, and supporting uh, supporting the players, uh, it, it's, it's great to see. And uh, uh, the life in the building, it's, it's uh, uh, pretty special here. Patrick, congratulations. As Jim said, a, a well-deserved uh, new contract extension. You made history when, when they named you the, the first Swedish general, man general manager in the National Hockey League. Um, there's a possibility you could make history again if this team could win the Stanley Cup, something that this fan base has waited a long time for. With the parameters having changed, the goalposts having moved so much better the way that this team has performed, a lot of heavy lifting. How do you look at the trade deadline? And are you prepared to go all in? And if that means giving up prospects, would you do it? You know what? Uh, this is conversations that, that I have with my staff every day, uh, with the coaches as well, how we play. Uh, Talk has said it many times that he's a puzzle guy. And again, I give the players uh, a lot of credit for where we are right now. They put ourselves in a position here to finish up the next 33 games. Uh, we all know that it's just going to get harder. Every single game from now on is going to be tough. Uh, there is a lot of good teams uh, in our division and conference here. So um, I think that's where what I like with the group we have is that we are having the next day mentality. Um, how do we get better? What can we learn? And I think that's what the coaches have done a, a really good job. And I think part of that will dictate the outcome of the rest of the season. But as I said here before, uh, the players have put themselves in a really good position. Do we go all in or not? There's something we always discuss because the short-term acquisition or the short-term decisions are always going to impact the long-term planning for us. And, and those are the things that, that my staff are always uh, taking into consideration when we do something. With the fact that you've had such strong performances from your third line, your fourth line, there's been so many contributors. Are you the type of person who wants to stay loyal to this group and let them finish out the task at hand? Or perhaps risk upsetting the apple cart to bring in one or two pieces that may be a different piece of the puzzle? Well, I, again, I think that the players um, uh, deserves the credit for where we are. Um, you go back to where we started, um, you know, Dakota Yasha was a healthy scratch. Now you can arguably that he's probably our best wall play guy because he worked on it. And to his credit, he listened to the coaching staff. Same thing goes with Nils Hoglander. He had a tough time early on to stay in the lineup, but um, they trusting the coaches to help them to get better. Uh, I think that shows the character uh, of our group here too. Uh, the, the, the team is, is growing together. 
And uh, the big puzzle is to, to see where, where our needs are in terms of, of improving. And, and if it makes sense, then, then uh, we're definitely gonna, get, gonna look at it. When you and Jim came in, and I know he was here a few months earlier, this job required an aggressive approach in terms of fixing the roster and fixing the cap. Uh, how have you evolved in that area? Because it was your first time as a GM in terms of being that aggressive guy. Were you where you were when you started? And you know, have you evolved in that area? I got an aggressive boss <laughs> that is on me every day, and that's what I like with Jim. Uh, he's always ahead of things, and, and uh, I think part of it, the, the parity of the league, it, it's, we, we'll see here coming out with the COVID, with the flat cap, and, and how hard it is to make deals. Uh, and again, I think that's where, where our focus was, to bring in quality coaching staff members that could um, interact and, and teach our players to get better. We, we know that we had uh, quality, quality individuals, but we had to become a team in order to have success here. I want to ask you about um, the effect of PD's situation. I'm not going to ask you to comment on his negotiations, but how much does it impact your ability to think forward? Because if you know that's going to be a lot of money if he winds up staying. And take me through your approach on how to balance short-term needs versus long-term needs within the context of that negotiation? Yeah, I, I think those, uh, it's a good question because that's what we're dealing with every day. Um, you know, we're, we're always looking at projection for our lineup, uh, potential numbers, and, and uh, I'm happy to see that several of our players having success in this environment. And uh, uh, as I said last year, uh, going through the, the free agent process with Rick Tockett as a head coach here, um, I, I guess I wasn't surprised, but I was very pleased with how many players that actually wanted to come to Vancouver and be part of this uh, process in the environment that, that Rick is known for. Uh, regarding PD, I think those are, are questions that, that we on a daily basis uh, evaluate and, and taking into consideration what makes our team better right now and how will that affect us moving forward here. And, and PD is, uh, uh, I mean, he, he's an extremely talented player, and uh, I, I think that he has even more uh, upside with, uh, uh, with the coaching staff that we have and, and understanding that you have to sacrifice some of your own points for the team points. And I think that's where the mindset and, and process of our younger players are, are kicking in here. Just one more, if I may. Just. Um what are the priorities for you at the, at the deadline? A lot of people believe getting a, some more winger help for PD might be that. Is, is that how you see it in terms of your needs? I, you know what, it, it, it's a little bit here, uh, again, going back to listening to, to my coach, Rick Tockett, and how he talks about the puzzles and how he want to play. Um, I don't want to get into specific needs. I think in general, we're looking at uh, different areas and, and what's available too, if it makes sense or not. But I'm, we all know that you need depth in order to be successful uh, down the stretch here. And uh, the way that players are, are performing in Abbotsford uh, is encouraging for us as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see and, and, and uh, act accordingly what, what's available here and, and uh, if it makes sense or not. Um, Patrick, first of all, congratulations on the new deal. Um, when you arrived here, I guess two years ago, this franchise wasn't in a very healthy position. Now you're first in the NHL. Had you anticipated this quick a turnaround? Again, I didn't anticipate that. And, and I think that's a credit more to uh, Rick Tockett and, and the coaching staff. I, what I did anticipate was that our younger players and our talented players would be able to take a step, for, big step forward with a structure and a system in place that Rick Tockett would provide. Um, am I surprised that it went so quick? Yeah, but I also think what Jim said when we had uh, our opening day of training camp that this team has uh, the potential and quality to be a good team if everything goes right for us. But, I, I would give, give Rick Tockett and his coaching staff a lot of credit and the players for buying in and, and listening to him. And maybe, maybe just to follow up to that, 
you've gotten, I, I don't, I'm not going to say it's been easy getting this far. How much harder does it get moving forward now that you've got like the old, you were the hunted and now you were the hunter and now you're the hunted sort of thing. How, how much harder does it get moving forward? It's definitely going to get harder. And I think that's the preparation the coaching staff are doing every day. They prepare the players for what's going to come in the future here. We all know that, that this league is it's, it's tough and uh, the respect we're starting to get, uh, which is great for the players, we're starting to get respect from other teams. So um, they, they're, they're circling in uh, the games against Vancouver because they want to get tested against the best team. And, and uh, we need to be prepared for that. Nothing's going to change here. We, we're still going to go by the day-by-day -day mentality. We know we have a lot of work. And, and our players, uh, uh, as Talk is mentioning, um, meeting pressure with pressure, that's what's going to happen here uh, the last 33 games. And, and that's what's we, what we're going to prepare ourselves for coming down the stretch. Patrick, you noted you maybe didn't anticipate this level of success this quickly. Does where you find yourself cause you to have to change anything in terms of your plans or your level of urgency, whether it applies to this deadline or for the duration of this new extension? Well, I, I think that that's been part of the process. Um, both Rick and I are process-driven person here. so. Early on, the, the wins and losses isn't really an indication of how you play. Uh, talking about playing the right way, talking about playing to your staples, talking about playing to your identity. I think those are the focuses from the coaching staff on every day, how do we get better? Um, and it's a, the bigger picture is to include Abbotsford and our development staff to have the same vision, being on the same same path to help the younger players making that transition. And I think they, they've done a great job. Um, Daniel and Hendrik being the bridge between Vancouver and Abbotsford, having those daily conversations with Jeremy Colleton and his staff and, and Rick Tockett and his staff, I think that, that builds the trust within the coaching staff to feel comfortable whenever a, a, a new player is called upon to come up here and, and, uh, and perform. So. Uh, again, this is a process towards where we want to be, and uh, we're, we're, we're not there yet. We're not satisfied. We'll continue to push to get better here. With, within the cap era, we've occasionally seen teams find, you know, I think about like the Lightning with those bridge deals or the Colorado Avalanche with that McKinnon second contract where you've got such a star level performer at such an efficient clip that it creates sort of a natural window. I, I notice your extension matches the term left, for example, on Quinn Hughes's deal with, you know, one of the best goalies, one of the best defenders in the sport, making something like 12 and a half against the cap. Do you have to approach this next four years as sort of a, a window for this team? Well, hopefully the window of success is just starting for us here. I think you, you don't want to have a one-year hit. I think you're going to be evaluated over time if you can uh, sustain it. And, uh, and that's something we are looking at and, and definitely challenging our, our staff on the Hawk App uh, side to, to continue to build uh, our prospects pipeline and, and Abbotsford uh, to have that success. And I think part of it is uh, we all know uh, the salary cap, and we all know that how you build around it and the core, it's, as you mentioned. Uh, for us, it's more about finding players with upside that uh, might make uh, a little bit less. That that you know, look look at uh, Amon Hoglander, Dakota Yasha, uh, Noah Jules, and Friedman. There's plenty of those guys that coming into this environment and and are willing to work. And we. Uh, I believe we have one of the better coaching staffs in the league to help each individual to be successful. But individual success comes from team success, and I think that's where our players starting to understand and trust where we are. Patrick, when you talk about your coaching staff here, you have Hall of Famers, you have Stanley Cups, like so much experience. How important do you think that is for the players, and specifically young players coming into this league, having that coaching staff or the development staff in Abbotsford, all these guys with all this experience, how important is that for you to know that you have that on your staff? I think that was a, a very important for us when, when we started looking um, how to build out the coaching staff. 
uh, I think the credibility of, of uh, those coaches, what they've done as players and, and coaches, um, and how can you not look up to, to Daniel and Hendrik uh, to see what they've done for this franchise, and they still today have the same hunger uh, to to uh, to want to win and be. It's not about them; it's about the team and the organization. I think that's what the players see here every day. Um, to see the energy and, the, and and wanted to be part of this and, and know that they they get better in this environment and and I think that's part of the, the culture and the standard that, that we want to establish and build here. Patrick, I'm curious how you look at uh, the greater challenge or the or, or the greater task, getting this team over the line for this year, or what you're going to face in the off season with all the free agents that you're going to have to sign and how you try to fit all that in. You're smiling, but I, yeah. I don't envy you. I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. But how do you see those two tasks? Do they compare, or are they greater? Is one greater than the other? Well, I, I think they 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 they're aligned together. But but what makes me happy is to see how some of the players that that wanted to come here uh, on a short term deals because they believed in themselves. We believed in them, and we were we know that they were capable of doing more in an environment where they get taught or teach every day. Um, again, or, or next, the, the players and the coaches have the next day mentality. Obviously, from my end and my staff, we always looking ahead of things. Uh, and that's one thing I, I've learned from Jim, being around him, that you always need to be ahead of things. And obviously, those are the discussions that we have um, around the hockey ops, uh, you know, what are, what are our options? How would our team look next year? We don't get to see you in the boardroom. We just get to see your work afterwards when the press releases come out or, or the guys on the ice. Can you just put us in your shoes when you look? Obviously, you have to look short term, but you also have to look long term. You've talked a little bit about that. But when we look at what you're going to go through in the off season and then the trickle down effect it may or may not have. I mean, Philip Peronik's going to need a raise. You've talked about Elias Pettersson. Uh, you know, you look at your your third and fourth line, those guys. Then you also look at your prospects. How do you figure out how those are going to slot in a year from now, two years from now? Because it's a big part of this organization moving forward, and I'm curious how it works. A absolutely, and I think that's where uh, creating this environment where where players, uh, you know, feel safe and f feel that we're going in the right direction, and and the ownership's commitment to the players too that. In order to be good, um, you you might have to sacrifice uh, some of your own ego in order to have a good team around you. I, what I've seen from successful teams that that's what their core players are doing. Um, they don't take the biggest uh, piece of the pie. Uh, they understand that there is a puzzle, and uh, I think we're coming a long way uh, in that regards. And and I do, as I said. Um, seeing that we have an internal competition here that, that is stronger than what it was when I walked in here two years ago. And, and hopefully by challenging our, our scouting staff that we're going to continue to build out that. Um, in the end of the day, there is only so much money we can spend on, on each individual uh, and, and not sacrifice the whole team. Uh, so those are... Definitely uh, questions that we're having where, uh, with, with the players' agents. Hey, pa hey Patrick. Hey. During your time as um, with the Canucks, you brought in some significant players through trade, and that speaks to your pro scouting department, such as Ronick, Lafferty, Smith, those trades worked out. Does that make you more confident with a potential deal at this year's deadline? We, we uh, definitely, I, I want to empower my staff. Um, my staff are making decisions easier for me. Um, they've been aligned with how we want to do, um, how we how we structure our staff. And um, Cam Granado and, and Ryan Johnson has been uh, putting a lot of work in to get that staff up and running. And uh, definitely it makes it easier for myself when, when I get the input from my staff uh, to make those decisions. I know that uh, between you and Jim, like historically, uh, you've not waited until the deadline to get a lot of your work done. How much of a priority is that for you now to maybe get some things done sooner versus waiting until March 8th? 
You know what, uh, as I said earlier, Jim, uh, Jim always want to be ahead of things. And that's one thing that I've learned from Jim to stay ahead of it, uh, communication with, the, with other GMs around the league and, and see what the, what's available and what the price tag in is on, on certain individuals. Uh, and if it makes sense for us, uh, uh, as we've shown and Jim has shown in the history, uh, we're, we're not going to just sit and wait. Last couple of Stanley Cup teams haven't parted with their first round pick near the deadline. And those teams, much like yourselves, will probably have a very low first round pick. So what would it take to get you to part with it? Well, it depends, I guess, on the market price, uh, first and foremost, what, what, uh, what the asking price in, is on, on uh, uh, certain players that are available. But, it, but again, I, I think that's something we internally discuss and, and uh, uh, we're excited and, and also um, seems to be uh, somehow an ex excitement about or prospects from, from other teams uh, based on the conversation I have. So uh, again, I, I feel we have, uh, we have assets here.